back to my channel and to a new video. Today I'm going to be showing you all the physical books I own that are on my TBR. I've been wanting to film this for about a year now, but my TBR has been so out of control, almost in the triple digits, that it just felt like such a mammoth task. I was not prepared. Now that I've hit my end of year goal and only bought a couple since, I thought, you know what, I can see myself going back up. I need to film this now. So I have got my entire TBR cart next to me and I've picked off some of the books off here that are my TBR. I'm going to show you them all now and any I know the synopsis of I will tell you but for the most part I do not. That is my issue. I do not read synopses before I buy books. Oops. I do have to apologise if my voice is more annoying than usual in this video. I went away last week to the woods and I think I've got some allergies <laughs> because my nose is just so congested but the rest of me is fine. So I apologise if you can hear that in my voice. I'm really, really sorry. Allergies, it's delightful, isn't it? Anyway, I'm going to dive straight into these books and show you what is on my physical TBR. The first book on my TBR is The Book of Accidents by Chuck Wendig. This is a thriller, horror, it's a horror, of a boy, a man, Nate, who his father passes away and his father was a very abusive man when he was younger and he's been left the childhood family home and him and his family move back there. I'm not sure why you would, but <laughs> they did, maybe money struggles or something. And when they get there, strange things start to happen uh, and the past begins to haunt them and maybe not just the past. This has been kind of trending a lot recently and it, the cover mostly for me has really taken my fancy. I think it sounds amazing. It's just the size that puts me off, which is why this is still on my TBR. But I'm really excited to read this, hopefully this month. Sounds super interesting and I have a lot of horror on this TBR, you will see, because I'm getting into horror more this year. The next book on my TBR is Ariadne by Jennifer Saint. This is a mythology retelling of Ariadne. I believe we follow Ariadne and her following, falling in love with someone and then being hurt. I don't know if that's true. But I know that we see, we hear about other women's tales other goddesses i'm not sure i have no idea i just know that this sounds amazing i absolutely adore the cover i think it is beautiful and i've heard many many good things so i'm going to be on this soon next is the watchers by a.m shine i've not heard a lot about this but it sounds super spooky a, a woman walks through the woods and she comes across some sort of bunker i believe i don't know how and then there the watchers watch her and other people getting tortured or going through trials and things sounds super spooky sounds like it would be a really good horror movie as Kira pointed out to me so I'm like wondering now how this is going to be in book format I am super scared I do not want to read this I'm putting it off even though it sounds amazing it is fairly short at 310 pages so there truly is no excuse next I have some books from the Zodiac Academy series I have number one retold so this is the first book The Awakening as told by the boys. So in this the oh yeah, Academy series, we see the point of views of Tori and Darcy, the girls, but also the boys who are the um, current legacy for the throne. Is that what they're called? <laughs> I don't know, but we didn't get their point of view in the first book. So the first book has been rewritten purely from their point of view so that we get to see what they were thinking during the series or during the book. I think that's super interesting, but the reason I haven't read it is because it came out after I'd already started the series and I don't want to go back to the beginning. Um, the next one is Zodiac Academy Cursed Fates. This is number five in the series. This is the one I need to read next. They are so chonky and the words are so small and dense, but it is really worth it. This series is absolutely amazing. I'm so excited to get to this. And then the final one for Zodiac is the um, little novella that comes after number five. This is 5.5. And it is called The Big Ass Party. So I'm assuming there is a party in number five that we do not see and this will be it. But I can't read the synopsis because I don't want to get it spoiled for me. The most recent addition to my TBR is Dune by Frank Herbert. I actually own a lot of copies of these down here, including the like extras like the Heretics of Dune and Children of Dune, etc. Those were my granddad's copies because Dune was one of my granddad's favourite books alongside The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Um, so when he passed I got those books, but I just don't feel ready to read them yet emotionally So when I watched the movie the new one that came out I fell in love But I was very confused so I ordered this copy which I do love actually the movie copy for once I love a movie edition. I just wish it didn't have that <laughs> um, But I absolutely adore it. I've read 
I picked it up as soon as it came in the post. Not, it was like an unofficial start. I'm not like sure I'm reading it. I'm just starting it. And I got 30 pages in. Can't say it makes any more sense than the book, than the movie does right now, but I'm hoping I will love this. Or at least if I don't get a bit more understanding on the movie that I watched because I didn't get it, I just loved it. <laughs> Next we have Under the Whispering Door by TJ Clune. Um, I've read The House in the Cerulean Sea and I did not actually enjoy it that much, but it wasn't bad. But this one sounds really, really interesting. I believe that there's this man called Wallace and he is at his own funeral, but he doesn't know that he's dead. I don't really know how that works. And the Grim Reaper comes to get him and make him accept that he is dead. And then I don't know what happens from there. I have no idea. I'm assuming they go on some sort of adventure. Maybe? I don't know. But I'm so, so excited for this one. The synopsis sounds amazing. I'm really glad I picked this up now. I kind of regretted it at the beginning because of how much I disliked this house in the Cerulean Sea. But now I am ready. I'm excited to fly through this one. Next, we have A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. I know absolutely nothing about this other than it's witches and people say dark academia, which is the vibes I get from this cover. So as I said, I can't really tell you anything about it. I just really want to read it and it's been on my radar for a very long time. So hopefully the next couple of months will be the time. Next we have Saw Kill Girls by Claire Legrand. Again, something I know nothing about other than I think it is a thriller. Um, so there you go, a purely a uh, cover read for me. <laughs> but I, I have this on my TBR. Next we have The Spirit Engineer by AJ West. This I believe is set after the Titanic and the whole world kind of becomes obsessed with Ouija and the afterlife. And I think the fact that so many people are doing Ouija allows spirits into the world that shouldn't be in this world. And somebody has to fix it, I assume. Um, the thing that I found most interesting about this was the fact that on the back, Jodie Whittaker wrote something about it. And I was like, why her? I don't know, but it intrigued me. So I bought the book and it is gorgeous. Hopefully it'll be fabulous. It's nice and small and short, which we love. The next book is The Women's Ball by Victoria Mass. Um, again, a super short read with no idea what it is about. I did at one point know, but I do not know anymore. But I hope I will love it and it will be good. Otherwise, what a waste of my money, huh? But yeah, this is on my TBR and just like everything else, I know nothing about it. Next, another very recent edition is The Wolf Den by Eloise, L L.O.D. Harper. Um, this, I believe, is following the women of brothels in Pompeii. I think. Um, I could be very, very wrong, but that sounds really interesting to me if that is the case. So I picked it up. It's rather chonky, but I, a lot of people were saying if you like uh, Madeline Miller's work, which I hated, uh, what's the other one? Song of Achilles, but I did love Cersei with my whole being. So I'm hoping that this will be a good one for me. And also I just find stories about women very uplifting even when they're negative stories i want to read about women i want to consume everything regarding women because we love them another witchy book on my tbr the nature of witches by rachel griffin i don't know too much about this other than i believe this woman is she holds all the elements and different witches can control the elements to control the seasons and they start to die off or lose their power or something and our protagonist is the only one who can control it and she becomes tired or something or doesn't want to do it anymore those of you who've read it are probably thinking what are you blabbing about right now but that is all I have managed to infer about this book everybody talks about it and yet no one seems to tell me what it is <laughs> or at least if they do I've forgotten but this sounds really really good the cover is gorgeous let's be honest this is why I have it <laughs> it's stunning but I love anything witches so hopefully it'll be fabulous another incredibly chonky boy is Realm Breaker by Victoria Aveyard. This sounds amazing. I've seen a lot about it on TikTok, even if I don't quite know what it's about, but it has a beautiful map and <laughs> it sounds great. This book sounds like it has everything I'm going to love in it, like all those tropes that you just find in fantasy, they're just fascinating. So Corrine finds out she has magic, so finding out is pretty fascinating. And then she is set on a quest to defeat this man who has raised an army to destroy the earth or something. And along the way she has trials and tribulations and I just love stuff like that. I think it's going to be really, really interesting. I just wish it wasn't the size of my head. Um, but it's hopefully going to be a good one. This has been on my TBR for a good while now, so I have to get through this soon. I'm not pulling them out because it'll take forever, but I have A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire and A Crown of Gilded Bones, both by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Um, those are the second two books in the From Blood and Ash series on my TBR. 
I'm hoping I'm going to like them as much as I like Blood and Ash. Hopefully a bit more. We'll see. I've kind of forgotten everything that happened in the first book, so I think I have to reread it, which is why I've put off reading these so far. But they look gorgeous there. Who cares if I've read them or not, huh? Mm. But they're two books on my TBR. Next we have an arc, and that is Twin Crowns by Catherine Doyle and Catherine Weber. This is one of those fantasies where there's two protagonists, and their two sisters, Rose and Ren, and we follow them both thinking they're in the right, doing the opposite thing to one another. And I believe we have to decide who is in the right and who is the, on the wrong. I don't know what they're fighting over. I'm not sure what the like main plot of the story is, but from what I do know, it sounds really, really interesting. I'm just waiting closer to the deadline to read it. Next, we have The Coldest Touch by Isabel Sterling. This is a paranormal romance following somebody who I believe sees the way people is gonna people are going to die. Um, and that can be very triggering for her because she has to hold their hand and anytime she holds someone's hand or touches them she sees these traumatic events and then she meets a vampire who I believe helps her control how to use this power um, and how to stop it and how to be be able to see it only when she wants to see it so that sounds really really interesting to me sometimes these paranormal YAs really hit and I'm hoping that's going to be the case with this one Next we have The Wolf and the Woodsman by Ava Reed. I again don't know very much about this. I know it follows Jewish mythology and things like that. Apparently there's a lot of different religions in it. If I remember correctly it's Jewish, Christianity and Buddhism. I could be wrong, I've forgotten. Apparently there's a lot of religions that it's been based off in here which I think sounds super interesting to read more about it as I'm not very knowledgeable on those subjects. So I'm excited to read this. It's just been very intimidating. Just a few more books to go. Firstly, we have These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. Uh, this is a Romeo and Jet Juliet retelling set in 1920s Shanghai, I believe. I really want to read this. It is one of my most hyped stories. The issue is I have two very nice copies of it, special editions. You can't see the next one, but it's there, the Owl Crate. This is the Fairy Loot. And I'm scared that I'm not gonna like it and therefore not, you know, be stuck with two copies of a book I don't like and two very beautiful copies. So, um, yeah. Oops. Hence why I haven't read it yet because I'm very nervous about it. But this is one of the books I'm most hyped for on my TBR. And now that the sequel is out, I feel like there is nothing that can hold me back anymore. I'm just so eager to, to find out what, what everyone loves about this story. Next we have All Our Hidden Gifts by Caroline O'Donoghue. I picked this up because everybody and their mother was talking about it for about two weeks and then no one talked about it ever again. So I really regret picking this up now. I need to stop picking books up until they've trended for a good like couple of months because I'm wasting my money. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to be any good but I think it's set around two high school girls and one of them has the talent to read the cards and see the future. And then she stops appearing at school and so her friend wants to like check she's okay and save her that could be so wrong that's like coming out of my brain as i think it but it might be wrong and i could check but i don't want to <laughs> i like knowing nothing about books so i just yeah if i've forgotten then great i've forgotten i think the cover is beautiful but as i said now that it's not trending anymore my motivation to read it has gone because i'm nervous it's not as good as everybody made out when i bought it another book that i bought because of the hype Ace of Spades by Farida Abike Imadi. <laughs> I bought this, I don't know why I thought this, but I said it in a video, I think this is set at a boarding school that has magic. And everybody was like, where the hell did you get that from? It's got no magic and it's not at a boarding school. And I never wanted to read it again. I know everybody says it's good, it's been hyped for so long. There is no way that this isn't a good book with how long it's been hyped for. You know, Olivia Reads a latte mentions it in almost every video she makes. And I want to know what that hype is all about. I want to, I need to. However, I wanted magic and boarding schools <laughs> and I'm not gonna get it and I'm sad about it. But I feel like, you know, it's been so long now I have no choice but to either read it or haul it and I think I'd rather read it or at least try to read it first. Someone give me some motivation for these books, please. If you've seen any, you know, just give me some motivation to read them. Thanks. On to our last book, it is The Wild Silence by Raynor Wynn. This is the sequel to The Salt Path, which I read last year and adored. It was amazing. It was non-fiction, which I rarely ever read, but I was absolutely fascinated by it. 
it follows the first book I don't want to tell you anything about this book but the first book follows Ray and Moth and Moth gets this terminal illness and they lose a court case they lose their house they lose so they've lost their house their health their money everything everything's gone and they decide to walk the British Channel I believe it's called and it's a very long walk and it somewhat cures this terminal illness you know he, he goes from his body destroying itself to reviving itself and everything the doctor said would never happen happened which was great and at the end of that book I thought it was the end I thought the story was done and turns out we're getting a sequel to see what happens to Ray and Moth next I am very excited to pick this up the issue is I'm not very good with uh, non-fiction and the only reason I picked up The Salt Path because I didn't realise it was non-fiction and then afterwards I was like wow I didn't know until like the authors know at the back um, and now that I know it's non-fiction I'm struggling to pick it up even though I know it's going to be amazing because I just love that first book so much and I'm kind of invested in Ray and Moth now I need to know everything <laughs> so those are all the books on my TBR I believe there was about 25 of them I could be wrong um, but I am excited for the majority of them. Uh, if you have read any of these and you have any thoughts you think I should ditch or you think I should prioritise any, please let me know and I shall see you in the next video. Bye!